This is one of the sickest plugins I've ever seen. Welcome to the 3D Animation Hub, my name is Brian and today we're going to be taking a look at Animate with an E. No, no, on, on, on the end. Yeah. The limits of how this could be useful is endless. Now we won't cover every single feature this tool has to offer, but I'll highlight some of the more useful functions and I'll show some examples as well. Now enough of me rambling, let's hop in. Just really quick before we dive into Blender, if you weren't already aware, we just launched our website to anime.ca. So if you're interested in a super extensive Blender animation course that's in the works right now, where we offer everything you could possibly need to make a kick-ass demo reel, you can check out the website for more info and sign up for our monthly newsletter. The first one just went out and the response has been amazing. We'll also be sending out a monthly animation tip slash infographic as well. So that's one email every two weeks or so. So expect some free goodies. And with that, here's Animate. All right, so here's where you actually download Animate. Now you guys better write down that URL real quick because of, no, I'm kidding. I'm gonna have it in the description for you, don't worry. But once you're on the site, come to code and then come down here and press download zip file. All right, once your file is downloaded, you don't have to unzip it, keep it as a zip file, but come to edit on Blender, go to preference. You wanna click on add-ons and then install. Now let's find where we kept it. It's right here, animate and install. Now it shows up on your little uh, Blender preference. You just press the check mark to actually activate it. So now that it's activated, when we press N or when we open this, it should be right here and it also opens here as well in your graph editor and i think here again in your timeline as well so you can do different things depending on where you open it uh, there are things you can do in the graph editor that you can't do in the viewport but uh, we're gonna go through some of this stuff so this is an animation i created real quick just to try and show how we can use this tool as an example uh, don't, don't think too much into it so the first thing we notice is the character is bringing her hand down kind of in front of her and then looking down at it. Now, what if we wanted to have the hand start somewhere here on the side and have her bring it down, I don't know, on her side? This is just an example. Uh, well, uh, we would have to probably go into the graph editor unless we want to reanimate the whole thing and then start moving things around, figure out where the character's hands gotta go. No, nope, not this way, this way, you know, it's just, it would be just a nightmare seeping through the graph editor to try and figure this out. Now, what if we had a tool where you could reposition a body part and it would reposition every other curve afterwards on that body part or on that control for you? Enter the anim aid with an E. So how to actually achieve this is we go to the graph editor where we have this open, the animate open. We go all the way down to anim offset and that's the one we're looking for. So I'm going to press offset, activate, and then I am going to move this hand right here. And I'm going to rotate it. And now when I press deactivate nothing happens well okay let's try this again <laughs> so turns out that the add-on doesn't actually work on the older versions of blender so i went ahead and downloaded the newest version 2.93 i believe and let's try this again so let's press activate same animation and let's bring the hand over here Let's say you got to know that you have to say the hand has to be to her side instead of in front of her. And let's rotate this bad boy and just set a key. And now when we press deactivate, boom, the entire animation has shifted to the new position. So instead of her bringing her hand down in front of her, she's bringing it down to her side. Now, another thing we can do, since we move this, why don't we also move the shoulder? So press activate. And I am going to move the shoulder here now. Bring it down a little bit. 
And I'm even going to twist her torso a little bit. All right. And I'm also going to turn her head a little bit. So she's kind of facing her hand now. And while we're at it, I'm going to move the eyes as well. Sure, let's say that's good enough. And I press deactivate. There's some fixing up to do with the eyes, but everything else is pitch perfect here. Let me see if I can fix the eyes right now in like two clicks. All right, deactivate. There we go. So in literally 30 seconds, we had the character from moving her hands in front of her all the way to her side and the entire animation followed. Now, obviously you can go in and tweak things now if you'd like to make it a little bit more subtle, have it work a little bit better but that just saved you probably 10-15 minutes of work. I think this is a wonderful tool. I wish I had it while I was uh, working in a Blender production. That would have saved me a lot of time when it came to notes, but that is not all. There, You can also blend the two animations. All right, so we're back in the original now. Now let's say you only want to have her have her hand on the side just for the initial, I don't know, 10 or so frames. We can do that and we can have her convert back into her original pose and fade into it. So let's go ahead and press activate. Click the controllers we want to change. So the shoulder, the chest, the head and the hands. And now I'm going to press mask. And so this orange filter pops up in the graph editor. I'm just left clicking. And I want to say from frame one to let's say frame seven or so. Then I'm going to press the pencil. And now when I hold control, so I know I know it's a lot, but you mask it and then you press the pencil so you can edit the mask. And so now I'm holding control and left dragging. And what this allows me to do is fade the animation. So this creates a fade between the two animations. So it doesn't just snap. So I'm going to drag this a little bit more. Let's say all the way to frame 16. Let's make our changes. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to make my change. So I'm going to move this and I'll fast forward through this part so you guys don't have to watch me make the pose again. All right, so we made our pose. Now I'm going to press deactivate. And hopefully when we press play, there we go. So we have the character starting up on the right and then fading and lefting into the original animation. And this is honestly the, <laughs> this would have saved me so much time in production. It's not even funny. There was so many little notes like this that would have been, you know, a single pose would have fixed it. But instead I had to go and reanimate everything afterwards to adjust to that note. So it may have, it may have been a small note, but me having to reposition the body and reanimate everything to work with it is what took the longest amount of time. And if I had this tool, it would have saved me a ton of time. So I'll, again, I'll have the link in the description for you guys to download. You can test around with their other um, features as well. You can set different kind of keys. You can, it has an ease in, ease out. And also when you press this button right here, the ease in, ease out also turns into an overshoot. So you have the option to overshoot to try and make your workflow a little bit faster. Um, again, I won't be going into all the different tools. I just wanted to show you this this one in particular, which in my opinion is the most important one. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to give a huge thank you to my beautiful Patreons. Thank you guys for your continuous support of the channel. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope this tool helps you out. And with all of that out of the way, happy animating, and I will see you guys in the next video.